Good morning. For some reason, um, when I was coming in to the Zendo, I was uh, thinking of, um, uh, was it Matthew Arnold's poem? Dover Beach, I think it's called. Anyway. It starts with, the sea is calm tonight, but it doesn't finish that way. Yesterday, I, uh, I went out to uh, buy peanut butter, and uh, uh, on, on my way out, uh, there were a number of uh, emergency vehicles arriving right out at um, Market and Noe at the corner there. And um, I couldn't really see what was going on. Um, so I, I kept on my way, and um, uh, walking down the street, I, I had the opportunity to um, enjoy or, or marvel at uh, the remarkable universe of dependent co-arising. And to appreciate, um, once again, that it doesn't, this doesn't require some special insight. Really, it's enough to have heard Buddhist teaching, maybe even just once. And then with a little, a little uh, karmic assistance, you can see uh, what Buddha described unfolding wherever you look. So there were, of course, there were people all over the place. And yet, the, the provisional nature of our world was, is very clear. So uh, there was, uh, you know, that person and that person and that person and this person. But all of those boundaries were completely provisional. Uh, at the same time, you know, um, by the time I got to uh, Whole Foods, um, I, I was reminded, again, you know, you have to it's good to apply the teaching consistently, all the time, if you can. So I was, I had my uh, hand in the raisin bin back there. I decided I'd get raisins in addition to peanut butter, and they were basically they were out of raisins, and I managed to conjure a certain degree of outrage that Whole Foods, of all places, should be out of raisins, especially when I want some. And then I had to remind myself, 
<laughs> Let's look at the provisional side, okay? And that was helpful. And then on the way back, uh, when I got to the corner again, the, there were even more emergency vehicles there. And I saw there was a, a gentleman on the pavement uh, and they were doing CPR. So I thought, you know, I'm pretty sure that didn't work. I was gone at least 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And if you're, they're doing CPR that long, no, it probably didn't work. So I, I uh, uttered some mantras as I walked by, and I was also grateful for being reminded of the, uh, the uh, intimate distance between birth and death. In fact, no real distance. So just on that little, little trip to buy a peanut butter and raisins, there was the entire palette of our world and our life and birth and death just waiting to be appreciated. So, again, please, uh, please uh, bear in mind that I'm not uh, parading my particular insight. I'm just saying what's, what's there to be seen. And that because of the, really, the constant push of the karma of body, speech, and mind, we do have to like remind ourselves you know, to return over and over again uh, to the, the teaching of liberation. So I think it, anyone who, who thinks that, uh, you know, just, just one shot, that does it, you know, just, uh, you know, get enlightened and then, you know, you're home free. It's like, no, I'm afraid it does not work that way. Even if for argument's sake, we were to say, okay, maybe it does work that way. Then is it consistent with Buddha's teaching that a, uh, a greatly enlightened person could uh, sexually harass other people? I don't think so. So there's that important uh, expression from our, our tradition. You know, someone asks, how is it when a, an enlightened person becomes deluded again? And uh, somebody replied, a broken mirror does not reflect again, and blossoms once fallen do not climb back up the tree. So the meaning there is um, you know, rather subtle and um, bears what uh, Dogen would say is you know, deep and concerted study. Once a mirror is broken, there are pieces to pick up. And 
uh, when blossoms fall, there are flowers to gather. But, you know, try and put them back on the tree. Maybe you make an offering of them to Buddha. And the broken pieces you put in the recycling. And then you get back to work. So the, the, uh, the sea is calm tonight. Uh, earlier there was uh, a being in torment screaming out there in the street. Maybe that's the same car alarm that was going off at two in the morning this morning. And, and yet, the sea is calm tonight and we, we don't dare forget about those ignorant armies that Arnold mentions. seem to have much to say this morning. That's, that's probably okay with most of you. I, um, I was uh, going to tell a uh, Zen story. I think I had some connection figured out, but I don't remember what it was. But that's just as well, you know, the, the main purpose, if there is one, of, uh, the, of Dharma talks is to, um, you know, point out the teaching and hopefully, in so doing, give some encouragement. But, I, you know, it's okay if, uh, you know, if uh, a speaker has a theme or something, wants to, or present an idea, but uh, that's not the main point. I'm sure I've mentioned this before. At, uh, at uh, Tassajara, I uh, 
I was giving a, a talk and uh, somebody uh, accused me of giving the same talk all the time. And I, I was, uh, at the time I was embarrassed, but in subsequent years I came to think, well, I hope so, actually. Anyway, I can, I can tell the story and then you all can make the connection, <laughs> if any. There's, uh, you know, our, one of our great ancestors, Yun Yun Tangshan, was, that's uh, Dongshan's Deng, teacher. And uh, he and this other guy, Dao Wu, uh, Zongshi, were uh, good friends. I, I'm thinking they were boyfriends. I don't, I don't have any basis for that. It's just that they, they hung out together a lot to the point where people were, would tell stories that involved the two of them. And in this story, the two of them are present, but the story only involves one, which I thought, that's kind of odd. And then I thought, eventually, Yun Yun and, and Dao Wu went their separate ways and, and took up teaching responsibilities. And, and I, I thought, I bet they were sad. I bet they were very sad. But they had their work to do. Anyway, uh, while they were palling around, they, uh, they went to visit this famous teacher, Nan Chan. And um, they went to pay their respects, and, and Nan Chan asked Dao Wu, well, what's your name? And Dao Wu said his, his ordination name, which was Song Shi. And he said, I'm Song Shi, which means source knowledge. And Nanchuan, wishing to test his mettle, said, uh, well, where knowledge doesn't reach, what kind of source is that? And Dao Wu replied in a very quiet voice, I don't care to talk about it. Nanchuan said, Nanchuan nodded and said, yeah, that's good when you uh, we talk about it, you get horns on your head. And uh, so I guess they, uh, they stayed there a while and then a couple of days later, Dao Wu and Yun Yun were once again hanging out together and they were mending their robes. And um, Nan Chuan came by and said, uh, so that, uh, that, was, that was good, a bit about uh, you know, where knowledge doesn't reach and you know, we don't choose to talk about it. But how do you practice that? And Dao Wu immediately got up and returned to the monk's hall. And in so, so doing, revealed that the sea was indeed calm. And also revealed that, uh, again, practice is something you do. And uh, in, in keeping with my uh, my uh, 
intention to uh, uh, provide my own commentaries for these stories. I have a, I have a little poem. If you're familiar with uh, Kazan's magnificent work, the Transmission of the Light, uh, he, uh, he gives a little poem at the end of each of the stories he tells, and uh, he often asks, would you like to hear it? It's not recorded whether people went, no, no, or... Anyway. Um, one goes. Uh, out on our lonely arm of the great river of stars, our world hangs in the radiant dark. Uh, when you get here, the heart that knows and what is known vanish quick as lightning. But where is the source? As the needle leads the thread through the fabric of Buddha's great robe, Practice will tell, but it doesn't bear talking about. just reminded that this is being video, videoed. So I, I should do something more entertaining. <laughs> I guess it's too late. Um, would you have any questions? That uh, my uh, the line from my poem it doesn't bear talking about it doesn't mean you can't talk about it.